making film? I uh, was primarily a documentary filmmaker. I looked up the director of this. She did a couple of films, and they're all kind of feminist-centric documentaries. So it makes sense that this movie has sort of like a, a real-life documentary feel. And of course, based on the trailer, the trailer does kind of lead you in the direction that's going to be more of a thriller, mystery kind oh, of thing. Oh, really? I yeah. haven't seen the trailer. The trailer does what a trailer needs to do, gets you to watch the movie. Can you deal with this? Hi. Why me? That's the problem with a movie like this, though. When they try to make the trailer exciting, then you're going to get people more angry than they maybe otherwise would be because they're misled. Yeah, it's 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 a typical trailer where that's, it keeps cutting to, like, critics, mm. the, the most uh, intense, on-your-edge-of-your-seat movie since Fast and the Furious 9. <laughs> you don't really get the impression that it's a movie based on Harvey Weinstein mm. you, or s s his ilk. Uh, Very influenced by Harvey Weinstein specifically because it's about a powerful producer. A film company. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, you kind of get the impression that there's going to be some dramatic twists and turns and stuff, and, and it's very straightforward. There's not that by design. It's what works about the it's, movie. It's, it's what makes it work. Yeah. And I was just sort of like, it's sort of, I was in a trance watching it. Even though, you know, nothing happens nothing according happens, to, to yeah. certain viewers. Nothing really does happen, but a lot happens, and and it's done so, so intentionally, mm -hmm. uh, and it, uh, it's done so tastefully, in a way where it it's it's like the one of the better horror movies I've seen. Okay. And there are so many little tricks, and so many things they didn't show you. It's the, the it's the uh, you know the the Jaws uh, effect. Yeah. Well, and also the. Uh when people say like nothing happens like it, it starts out it's very almost documentary like where we see it's one day of her working in this office for a weinstein like producer um and it's all done very like just everyday mundane which is why when the creepy weinstein stuff starts to creep in that's treated as sort of mundane everyday work and that's why it's interesting, like, when the Weinstein stuff started to break, people were like, how did nobody know? How about you know? Nobody knew this was happening. When the, the dirty secret is that everybody knew. Maybe not, like, you, now people post photos of, like, Weinstein with, like, Oprah and, like, Meryl Streep. Like, they probably didn't know. But the day-to-day -day office worker people, they do. And it just became a boring, mundane part of their job the same as like uh making coffee or taking phone calls mm -hmm. and that's what makes the movie effective is that it's all presented as just something that's become so normal yeah uh you mentioned the beginning uh which takes the uber and so yeah documentary you see her wake up the actress we'll talk about the actress in a minute um it's dark mm -hmm. you don't know if it's morning you don't know if it's night you see her get up kind of go through her routine she's leaving this kind of dumpy house gets in a car and has to go all the way into the city she's driving into the city there's lots of shots of you know the, the new york city waking up and then you start to realize oh okay she's going into work she's going into work super fucking early mm -hmm. no dialogue all shots uh it could have been you know like uh, it could have been uh, her alarm goes off oh god uh, her mom calls her oh you still doing that yes it's it's five in the morning, and I'm the one who has to go in and open up the office, Mom. You know, exposition. None of that. Nothing. We watch her go through her morning routine. She does all this stuff in intricate detail. All the little, she's printing out things, putting on people's desks. Nobody has shown up yet. And that's like 20 minutes. Yeah, and there's a, like a methodical nature to the rhythm of it, too. Like yeah. the editing and how long each shot goes on. Yeah, yeah, it's sort of like hypnotic. Yeah, similar to like a Gus Van Sant kind of thing. Oh, like a Psycho remake? Like the Psycho remake, like <laughs> Goodwill Hunting, or movies like that. Yeah, uh, Finding Forrester. Well, more, more so I'm talking about uh, Last Last Days, uh, the Kurt Cobain film. The just, Elephant. Like, yeah. Elephant. You're just like mesmerized by 
the repetition, the tension, you're waiting for something to happen, you're wondering where they're taking you, they're not spelling everything out for you. Um, but the, the assistant follows, because I know everyone's going to try to fast forward past this to get, <laughs> to get to the wrong Missy review, but the assistant stars um, Julia Garner. Uh, you know her from We Are What We Are. We Are What We Are. Yeah, we'll a wonderful film directed by Jim Mickle. Yeah. I know her from the wonderful show Ozark. Oh, and have you watched Ozark? I have watched Ozark, and I've watched all the seasons now, and I'm all caught up, so any of you fucking pricks on Twitter try to spoil anything. <laughs> Helen Pierce... <laughs> Whoops! Sorry, I I, I, I... I took it out on about a million people when only one person spoiled 90 Day Fiancé for me, so <laughs> sorry about that, Ozark viewers. Hopefully Jay will bleep that spoiler out in editing. Um, I can't bleep it out from my brain, though, because now I heard it. But Ozark, I love it. Julia Garner plays Ruth, a foul-mouthed redneck <laughs> who's helping Marty launder money. But in this, she, she doesn't say the F word once. I don't know shit about fuck. Uh, and she plays a young intern at a film company, an assistant. The, the, the New York wing of a film company. The New York wing, yeah. Which, they, which is important because it's not what people think, like, uh, Hollywood film production. You think of, like, all the movies about Hollywood films and like the big offices with the big windows overlooking LA. This is just a dumpy office building. It's the side of behind the scenes of the movie industry that you don't even see in the movies. Mm -hmm. You think of like uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure when he's riding through all the sets and you, know, <laughs> you think that's what it looks like but really like yeah the New York production offices of a film company that's multinational Assuming it's a Miramax kind of Weinstein company. Sure, type one thing. of those types, yeah. Um, where, yeah, they do, they're always talking about going to LA and back, and they have production offices, but really it's just people like looking at spreadsheets and it's disgustingly lit and it mm -hmm. looks gross and it, it doesn't, that little room she works in with the two other guys, and it, it doesn't look like a movie office set. It looks like a real dirty office that yeah. that isn't quite polished and perfect and, and the way everybody talks to each other too is just yeah. so mundane they're not spelling anything out yeah it, it doesn't have those big scenes you keep waiting for it to have that scene where she has a big speech or she goes off on someone and it never happens the biggest scene in the film is when she goes to the hr rep and you know which again is very like you, you see her go down the stairs and walk to the building next door yeah. then go up the stairs and it's yeah, it's very uh very methodical yeah i, I guess we'll say spoilers uh if you do, if you want to watch the assistant and enjoy it um we will say spoilers but we never see the boss we never clearly hear him on the phone it's always got this weird like distortion or it's it's very distant uh, all of his activities are very distant and it's very obvious too to yeah. to our our lead oh the moment when she has to go meet a girl in the elevator to give her her earring back yep that's a, a great detail no no nothing mentioned about it before or after she finds it and then she puts it in her drawer she kind of knows why it's there mm -hmm. never see the boss he's 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 untouchable. He's mysterious. Mm -hmm. She does her best to say something, but it's like, what are you going to do? Yeah. You're going to lose your job over this. You can stay quiet. And yeah, everybody else is sort of uh, willingly ignorant about it when she goes to HR. And, and I, I found an earring in the office today. An earring? Forgive me, but are you often um, cleaning things off this floor? I mean, we have a janitorial crew, right? I understood what it would be like to be in that situation better from this super mundane, simple story than any sort of like news headline. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it made you look at it from a different perspective, like like you just said. Yeah, news headlines, Harvey Weinstein, why did you say anything? Why didn't everybody? Yeah. And then you watch a movie like this and you're like, oh, okay. The real version of it was creepy and you really couldn't do anything about it. And so, yeah, it was a great movie. I, re I really liked it and I was, I was even though... As people said, it was more exciting to watch paint dry. I disagree. Yeah. I was, I was like hooked, like from start to finish. And it's a short movie. It's like ninety minutes. Yeah, it's that, not that like it's three hours long. Yeah, that would be hard. I mean, even as it is, it could probably still kind of function as a short film. 
Maybe. Um, yeah. But I, I think for me, it, it's not going to work for everybody. And if no. someone says it's boring, I completely get it. Sure. Because um, you watch a movie, it, it's it's on that line between being preachy and being entertainment. Yes, it does have a message, you know, an important, strong message about this. But at the same time, you want to entertain people because it's a movie. So it's almost it's almost like watching a documentary. Um, and without ever hitting you over the head or or talking down to you at all. Yes, we never. It's just here it is. She never walks in on the room when he's assaulting a woman. We never see anything. It's the perfect example of of things that we don't see are scarier. Mm -hmm. And she knows something's going on, but she's not quite sure. You're very separated. There's a wall yeah. in between you and that drama. And everybody wanted that drama. They wanted her to <laughs> kick the door open and see Harvey Weinstein, you know, assaulting some lady and her to call the cops and all this drama to happen. And I'm going to fire you. And the police, he sends an assassin with a laser scope to, sh to shoot at her through, you know, and she's driving in the taxi cab. And, <laughs> and Weinstein's behind her in the car trying to run her out the road. Instead, she leaves the building and goes and eats a muffin. And if the Oscars happen, I think it'll get nominated for some kind of Oscar or something. Uh, it's probably a little too under the radar. I think, I think so. It's probably a little too small of a movie. It's got that. It's got that uh, that hot button message, though, Jay. That's true. That's true. So now, well, we've added three movies now because before the only nominations were going to be Troll, Trolls World Tour, and uh, what else did we talk they, about? They rescinded the. It has to be played in theaters. They did. Oh, okay. So. Well, that means that the wrong Missy can get a nomination. Speaking of the wrong Missy, <laughs> let's go to commercial. To my boy, man. All right, Jay, it's time to move on. Okay. Now, these are positive reviews. These are reviews by award-winning film critics that gave the movie a positive tomato. Right. So these are critic reviews, not user reviews. These are critic reviews. Okay. I, of course, skip the user reviews. These are these are paid off critics. I mean, critics. Okay. They want to get the light of time. Yeah. I, I mean, just regular movie critics that gave the movie a positive score. Here's some excerpts while we show clips from the trailer. I was vaguely amused here and there. This is every bit an Adam Sandler movie. If you're gonna watch this kind of movie, then you're gonna watch this kind of movie. The Wrong Missy is like a comedic Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> Lauren Lapkiss is the boulder. <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad. I don't know what but the these are good reviews. Yeah, good reviews. The narrative is predictable, but the situations are outlandish and wacky enough to keep you invested. Ultimately, The Wrong Missy is yet another film of wacky, somewhat likable characters, all run through the sadistic ringer of comedy and a story that survives on a handful of over-the-top, cringeworthy moments. That's a positive review. Sandler has packaged far worse films for Netflix, and watching The Wrong Missy, it's easy to sit back and give in to the movie's it is what it is ness. <laughs> That's what they said about Casablanca. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess people are desperate for anything in these virus times. Yeah. People need something light. They need to laugh. They need to lift their spirits. By watching 60 year old David Spade in a terrible wig get vomited on by a horribly, horribly unfunny actress. I am Hellstar! Who dares to enter my We'll just say it right now. This is an Adam Sandler vehicle, Happy Madison. Happy Madison's this production company. Where yeah. Mysteriously, every film ends up on a cruise ship or in Hawaii. We're, we've talked about this before. This is obvious. He asked ne Netflix for money. He has a deal with Netflix to produce Happy Madison films. They don't even go in theaters anymore. No. They just go right on Netflix. He gets uh, $50 million to make one of these movies. One million of those dollars is spent on the cast and crew mm -hmm. and the budget and the production. And the other $49 million goes to David Spade and Rob Schneider. Mm -hmm. And everybody's happy. You know who else is in the movie? 
playing his because it's uh, David Spade is up for the big promotion and he's got his rival, that rival woman. Yeah, yeah. That's Adam Sandler's wife. Oh, I did not know that. I, I think his daughter is in the movie too. Have respect for the island. Shut the fuck up! You're not doing it. Like you don't even know me. That would make sense. Yeah, they all got a nice trip to Hawaii. But also in the movie, can we talk briefly? Do you know who Nick Swarsden is? Uh, yeah. Nick Swarsden, uh, another one of. Adam Sandler's horribly unfunny friends. He plays the friend. The he officer. plays the friend in this. He had his own Happy Madison vehicle a few years ago called Bucky Larson, Born to be a Star. Ooh. One of the biggest flops of all time. <laughs> and he is uncomfortable to watch in this movie because he looks... I'm not fat shaming. He doesn't look fat. He looks bloated, like coke bloat. And his voice is all raspy. So it's good news, bad news, more bad news. Your ex fiance is going to be at the retreat. Because it's not just that he's like overweight, it's like he looks horribly unhealthy. In a way, I remember Chris Farley hosted SNL like three months before he died. And I don't know if you ever saw it. It was so awkward. Mm. He was so like off and he looked terrible. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. I've really learned some lessons tonight. You know what I've learned? I've learned lessons about responsibility. Responsibility. And it was like three months, three months later, or maybe six months later, he died. The, the Artie Lang syndrome? Yes, yeah. But he's in the movie because he's their friends. And he's supposed to be, he's playing the typical role in these movies where you have your main guy and the friend that the main guy explains everything that's happening in the movie to. And he says, dude, what? Yeah. He's that role. Guys who should be 25. Yes, yeah. not not bloated uh, cokeheads not bloated in their forties. Six, <laughs> no, in their fifties. Maybe in their fifties or, or even sixties. <laughs> I, I do. Yeah, it's like yeah, the, that I'm working my way up the corporate ladder. I got to impress the boss. Mm -hmm. Like David Spade is, is like fifty eight years old, and <laughs> he should be well past the I got to impress the boss phase. I mean, clearly they pulled this script out of a dumpster. <laughs> Maybe like the intern wrote it, or you know, they always talk about like. Like when when a production company gets scripts and like an intern has to read them, oh yeah, and like ninety percent go in the no pile and you know some go in the maybe, mm -hmm. and that's this is all the no pile yeah. and it's like the top one was the wrong Missy, some high concept like trash comedy. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, how many locations? Uh, how many? Uh, Can we shoot it in Hawaii? Can we shoot it in Hawaii. Can my wife be in it? Yeah. Give the lead to my buddy David Spade. No one's right for any of this. Nothing you could ever do would disappoint me. I love you. This one from I thought I was texting my dream girl. <laughs> I was texting that crazy girl. To the best weekend ever. <laughs> okay, well, the premise of the movie, he uh, meets two women in a short span of time, both named Missy. He has a horrible blind date. Let's have two tequilas, please, senorita. First chick in the armor, Mr. Perfect's not so perfect. Oh, am I? Do you want to get uh, it? Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. But she's the most obnoxious person ever, which would be fine as like a singular scene where she's just this weird, uh, creepy, obnoxious person. She pulls out a knife. She just says bizarre things. Um, and then he meets another woman with the same name. And then he accidentally invites the wrong Missy to a, a Hawaii uh, uh, corporate retreat. The, the other thing to mention is the other woman is 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 better for him she's she's like perfect for him yeah. she's you know and she also looks age appropriate for age appropriate <laughs> um she's reasonable normal they have a nice conversation he they set up that david spade doesn't drink alcohol neither does she they're both reading the same book yada yada what you'd think would be your soulmate yeah. and then there's a switcheroo where he accidentally invites the wrong missy to the corporate retreat in hawaii yes and there is your premise and the predictable script thing to do is oh as he gets to know the wrong missy he learns a little bit more about her and he actually starts to fall for her this is all this is all given away in the trailer yeah but the character is portrayed so obnoxious and so horrible that it, it's beyond absurd to think that he could ever actually fall for her what are you doing here what are you doing here Wow, I like the feel of that. I like the smell of that. <laughs> oh shit, no shit, oh shit. What? The only way to make that work is if you treated that absurd, the idea of him actually falling for her. But they, they force in that shitty Happy Madison, like fake sentimentality stuff halfway through the movie. 
She's already sexually assaulted him twice. <laughs> yeah, David Spade gets raped. He gets raped on a plane. He gets raped in their hotel room. There's probably a way to do that funny, but everything is just executed so awkwardly. That, that, I think that's the big standout in this movie. The big question mark is that we don't know. Um, because you watch it and you're like, okay, it's got, it's got a pretty typical comedy premise. Got it. But if, if she played it much more toned down and was just a little eccentric and did really like embarrassing things like it was really like stuffy kind of corporate retreat and she was kind of a free spirit and just did some kind of or socially so awkward socially something. awkward yeah it, but didn't take it she she plays it like she's just batshit like insane. an insane person yeah and, and it becomes uh, just obnoxious and it's and hard to watch like it's one of those where you get like secondhand embarrassment for the actors kind of thing yeah and 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 i don't know if it's a situation this is the question mark <laughs> put a big old question mark on the screen i don't know if it's a situation where they just said uh lauren lipkiss just go crazy the director i looked up is like some kid who looks like he's 18 years old it's not one of the usual uh adam sandler movie directors no it's like some guy who's like 20 and who's directed like comedy shorts for like the internet and, uh. and somehow he's helming this movie probably paid him 50 bucks <laughs> <laughs> you get to go to hawaii hundred dollars you get to hang out with nick swarsden vehicle for this Missy character and the, the, the humor is not funny. I made it! I made it! Yeah! The portrayal in the first half is so obnoxious that there's absolutely no way you can get on her side in the second half when they're supposed to really fall it's, in love. It's very difficult and there's a, there's a shift in her behavior to where she becomes a little less obnoxious and that's when he starts kind of falling for her and it's like it's not motivated by anything yeah isn't like the shift is uh because his boss they got the movie got one joke one laugh for me i didn't want a coffee oh should i drink it i don't care <laughs> yeah something about it made me laugh the boss has an assistant guy who comes up with the coffee yeah and then it happens again and then you expect the third time is we, we desperately need coffee, we, uh, you know. Uh, no, it never comes back. This, this hilarious comedy situation that we've set up <laughs> randomly really needs a cup of hot coffee. And then cut to him, you know, yeah. smoking a joint out on the beach. Yeah, something. Uh, I was like, well, oh, well, I do two comedies and threes. Where's the third? Where is the cop? What is the point of the coffee setup? They had to cut that scene so they could have more hilarious hijinks with Lauren Lapkus yelling. Scared you're gonna lose the only supportive adult relationship you've ever had. All right, stop using that voice. Stop being a bad husband, floppy bags. But uh, the, the what I was gonna say is that the boss, she like hypnotizes him. She's a hypnotist too, in addition to, cause she's weird and does all these things. So that's like David Spade starts to turn around to liking her when she hypnotizes his boss into liking him. So it's not anything like selfless or, or good that she's done. She then, then there's that scene where she tries to have uh, an awkward threesome with his ex fiance. Oh, yeah. But yeah, that and then they're like having a threesome. They keep kicking her in the face. The joke is that she just gets kicked in the face a lot, I guess. <laughs> have a punchline just have her leave yeah so he chooses to have sex with missy and he keeps kicking her off the bed but he does it accidentally it's an accident thing, it'd be one yeah. thing if he like forced her out in a comical way but it would be it's, yeah. it's accidental but it's also st supposed to be uh on purpose i don't know yeah there's probably 47 other ways you could you could do the scene where he gets rid of the ex in a funny way yeah 
But then so she just keeps accidentally getting kicked in the face and then just decides to leave. Mm -hmm. Guess it's funny that she was trying to participate in the three-way but kept getting knocked off the bed. Let's talk about Rob Schneider's performance. Oh, my God. Rob Schneider shows up in this film. That's what I'm talking about. Let's get this wussy wet. <laughs> I think they realize that he can't play ethnic characters anymore because in all the earlier Adam Sandler movies, he's like Chinese, he's like Middle Eastern. They can't do that anymore. So now he's just man. You know what I, I really despised in the whole movie? Like this really shows the laziness is their corporate retreat. Yeah. They put up uh, the name of the company is Credit of America something like that it's just like the worst fake company name <laughs> and they put up a banner and it's just like this generic font and it's just <laughs> credit of america like bank of america it's just times new roman on yeah life. and it's just it, it, it's oh like they couldn't even come up with like a cool like original company name like or it's like software company or yeah I mean, they have to be some kind of corporate -y, yeah financial consultants or something it's just credit of america it's like whatever whatever the bare minimum to try and trick netflix into thinking they're making a real movie yeah basically <laughs> you're welcome this is not who i thought she was she's free uh, at the at this stage of the game i'm at acceptance to where i realized that there is an audience for this We've talked about our buffet analogy. Oh, yeah. Where Netflix can... Everyone... Everyone wins. I guess the only real losers here is a very slim percentage of the audience that will turn on the wrong Missy without watching the trailer, without, without knowing anything about it, mm -hmm. and just watch it. And they're truly wasting their time. Because if you watch the trailer... You know everything you need to know. You know everything you need to know. You say, "Oh, this looks terrible." Even a trailer can't make this movie look good. Yeah. So you watch. The, if you watch, if you're dumb enough to watch the movie after watching the trailer, that's on you. <laughs> and there's 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 a whole bunch of people who will watch this because it's a turn off your brain. You know, it's, there, there's a lot of those comments. Escapism. It's, it's, uh, there's a couple of funny parts, but uh, there, the Hawaii looks nice. Uh, you know, I, I don't I, I don't have have to hear the term social distancing there's a part on an airplane when oh yeah airplane and we had a cameo by hurley from lost can you do me a huge favor and maybe uh check my breath for me what's up bud? i don't know if that was a joke the fact that it's like the lost guy on a plane oh the tropics. oh I, did, I didn't even I, think about that, that was my so. first reaction and i was like there's oh, no reason for him to be there and he's yeah. not like a big name celebrity or yeah. like hey it's whoever. i thought it was a joke like it, like you take that a step further and David Spade sits down on the plane and oh yeah, uh, and looks around and oh you know that's another actor from Lost that's another actor oh, from Lost yeah, yeah. and you see all the characters from Lost on this plane yeah. which was uh, is obviously doomed I thought that was the joke but he was just a guy yeah. and so I was like that's a pretty funny joke is that they got the guy from Lost on a plane flying to a tropical island but that wasn't the joke the joke was I thought he was going to be a reoccurring character but no the joke was, does my breath smell bad? I'm, I'm meeting a lady. It smells good. Did you eat dog shit this morning? I'm just kidding, you're good to go. <laughs> just kidding, man, your breath smells fine. Okay, oh, that was the joke. That was the joke. Yeah. Well, and then the wrong Missy shows up, and, and while David Spade is sleeping, she starts giving him a hand job. And I was waiting, uh, you know, we see Hurley across the aisle watching this happen. He should have looked at the camera and said, this is worse than my last flight. <laughs> Everybody got paid. <laughs> See, I think I think of movies like this. Have you ever seen improv comedy? <laughs> um, I hate improv. Okay. Not not a, like in a movie when characters ad lib that can work. But you're talking about when you go to an improv show, and they say to the audience, "Give me a name, give me a city, and give me an object," and then they make a skit out of it. Yeah. 
There, uh, and I'm sorry if I'm offending anyone, but there's a certain breed <laughs> of human beings. Uh, there's regular people, and then there's people who laugh at improv. And because um, I could go to improv and I, I will never laugh. Yeah. I, I guess they are putting their comedy in a context, sort of. Comedy needs a context and comedy needs to be thought out. Yeah, you're, you're more of a structure guy, so that yeah. makes sense. And yeah. people acting silly or saying random things or making stuff up on the spot never funny to me and i could sit at an improv show and not laugh yeah. one bit and there are people that just laugh at anything tell me underwater we're mermaids but you won't be able to understand me of course i will we're mermaids and the, and that is the the target audience for these kind of movies is is people that laugh at improv um because improv is the worst thing since cancer <laughs> or or bagpipes <laughs> or coronavirus so people will watch this as escapist humor it's 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 glowing on their television it's colorful uh someone's yelling crazy things about poop or my hand smells like your butt crack or lauren lapkiss falls off a cliff at one point <laughs> I can't really think of any redeeming qualities. I mean, you see, you, you see the resort that they're staying at the whole time. Oh, sure. The film crew and Adam Sandler's staying at, and everybody's staying at. Well, Adam Sandler isn't there. He's probably off filming Uncut Gems when this was made. Maybe, maybe. Which I guess we should mention that briefly, if we're going to shit on Adam Sandler some more. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uncut Gems is not an Adam Sandler movie. No. Okay. Uncut Gems, very briefly, you haven't seen it, right? No. It's a very good movie. I have nothing to say about it that hasn't been said a million times already. Uh, but every seven or eight years, a real movie. And everybody says, oh, Adam Sandler, he's great in this movie. Adam Sandler is very good in a very specific type of role. He's very limited as an actor, but when he's used appropriately, he's very good. Punch Drunk Glove is one of my favorite movies. Um, so Uncut Gems is the newest example of that. And, but everybody always says after these movies, oh, this is a turn for Adam Sandler. He's going to start doing more. And then he does shit like this. I know he's not in it, he, his company produced it, he's less involved, whatever, but he followed up Punch Drunk Love with anger management. Every time he does something really good, he follows it up with garbage. What? Well, Uncut Gems is not a cash cow. No, it's a movie that filmmakers wanted to make. The Safdie brothers, they're very talented filmmakers, um, and, and they knew that Adam Sandler, his personality would be appropriate for that character, and it is, and he's really good at They it. sought him out. I was trying to think if the one with you was worse or better than Jack and Jill. I think it was better than Jack and Jill. It is. I mean, that's not saying much. Jack and Jill, though, like, I think when we talked about that, that didn't even feel like a movie. No. This feels like someone had a script. It's a very generic script, but it's a script. It's got somewhat of a structure to it. Yeah. Uh, not necessarily to the, the jokes. There's not really any well-crafted jokes. But no. story-wise, it's serviceable. And it didn't feel too sleazy in terms of, like, product placement. I remember Jack and Jill was more like, oh, it's like Pepsi. And Pepto-Bismol. Pep yeah. Uh, uh, Royal Dunkin' Caribbean. Donuts. Cor Royal Caribbean. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to Royal Caribbean Cruise Line. Yeah. Whatever. I think, well, I think that's the only way they could get oh. those movies made, because those are, like, theatrical productions. Yeah. Now they're doing the Netflix things. They're cheaper to make. They don't have to do yeah. as much shoehorned in product placement, yeah. I would guess. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah. But it's still not anything that anyone should ever watch. No. Yeah, there's like a lower stakes element to it, as opposed to like Jack and Jill. Like we saw that in the theater. I know. And this has that like, oh, it's just another dumb thing on Netflix. Like, the stakes are lower. You're not ruining a franchise. You're not remaking <coughs> a classic comedy. Yeah. Oh, plus I remember.